Hello again, agents. Today we're resuming our investigation into the SCP-3812 documents. The anomaly presents capabilities beyond reality alteration, contained only by a fragile and disturbed human mind. The documents we'll explore today will reveal clues about the origin and objectives of this anomaly, as well as the possible consequences of its existence. Addendum 3812.5 Event On SCP-3812 was detected moving through a sparsely populated region in Paraguay towards a more populated region in the Argentinian border, likely en route to its current location. As Foundation personnel moved to intercept SCP-3812, a series of unexpected phenomena occurred. 1935 hours SCP-3812 is attacked by a large number of local wildlife. SCP-3812 repels these attacks, but appears in some way startled. 1941 hours A massive sinkhole appears below SCP-3812, extending down an indeterminate distance. SCP-3812 falls, but is immediately returned to ground level, and the sinkhole vanished. 1950 hours a large number of objects fall from the sky onto SCP-3812. These are later determined to be tungsten rods, though the origin of them is uncertain. The rods appear to pierce through SCP-3812's body, but upon further inspection, simply disintegrate within a half meter of SCP-3812. After the first three rods fall over a 40 second period of time, they are accompanied by no fewer than 3,000 others that fall in rapid succession, each having the same result as the previous. Despite these being clearly visible from nearby towns, nobody outside of Foundation personnel appears to have noticed it taking place. 2014 hours Multiple incorporeal instances of SCP-3812 begin to fall away from the central mass of the entity, as if they were dying. SCP-3812 is unaffected. Each of the incorporeal instances becomes hostile to the main instance and attacks it. SCP-3812 does not initially seem to notice the instance, but eventually appears to look in their direction, causing them to disappear suddenly. 2019 hours An explosion occurs at the point in which SCP-3812 is standing. SCP-3812 is unaffected. Several other large explosions occur immediately afterwards, as with the toxin rods. This is somehow not noticed by local populace. 2039 hours A gravitational anomaly, later determined to be a freestanding, stable, naked singularity, appears in front of SCP-3812. SCP-3812 passes through the singularity unfazed, which dissipates shortly afterwards. For a period of 72 hours after the beginning, additional anomalous phenomena occur around SCP-3812 all of which failed to kill SCP-3812. Eventually, local populations were evacuated and amnestics were given to witnesses. After this 72-hour period, SCP-3812 was observed to glow white momentarily, and then shift sideways and then disappear. Immediately afterwards, the anomalous phenomena ceased. After a period of absence lasting 8 weeks, SCP-3812 reappeared at its current position, above the South Pacific Ocean. Shortly afterwards, Foundation Overwatch Command received a message on a secure server, access to which is limited to overseers alone. The contents of this message are as follows. A quick explanation in case you haven't caught on yet. Your world has rules. Physical rules that cannot be broken. You call them the laws of the universe, and they are what you study in physics, chemistry, etc. Those laws create the narrative of your reality, the unchangeable story that defines your existence. Once the laws are established and the ball is set in motion, it cannot be changed. I wrote the laws of your universe, and as such, I created the narrative. This isn't the first time I've done this, but it was the first time I tried something like this specifically. I wanted to create something that, by definition, superseded everything that superseded it. I wanted to see how many layers there are, 
if the stack of narratives really do go on forever upward. The mistake I made was when I didn't realize that by making him supersede everything that supersedes him, he's also superseding himself. I'm sorry. I think I pretty bad this time. I've tried everything I can think of, but I can't undo him. I don't really understand how, but I think he's above me now, and whatever is above me too, because whoever wrote my narrative isn't happy about this. I don't know where he's at now, but I think he exists in all of our realities simultaneously. Eventually, he'll either reach the top or just keep going, and neither option is good. I'm going to keep looking for some way to fix this. You should too. V. Addendum 3812.6 Excerpt from Supersession and the Echelon of Reality by Dr. Robert Scranton I'm attaching this excerpt from one of Dr. Scranton's articles about the nature of reality. If SCP-3812 is some higher level entity, there might be something to be gleaned in here. Kei Yamamara I'm often asked by my colleagues, Dr. Scranton, do you believe in gods? Many might feel as if this is a silly question, but I do not believe it's a silly question, just the wrong question. The idea of a god implies an entity that supersedes you in a complete and infinite way, something that holds a power without limits, that not only knows the whole story, but can write and rewrite that story at will. Within our reality, I do not believe that any such being exists. There are a number of entities that we are aware of, in one way or another, that hold tremendous power over our universe. Many would call these beings gods, and while they certainly hold many of the characteristics of a god, they are still limited. Their reach and scope is limited to our reality, just like we are, and though they may carry more weight within it, they are no less bound to it as we are. So then, what would truly constitute a god? This entity would have to totally supersede our reality, to be able to look over our reality, not like we would look over ants, but like we would look over our thoughts and ideas a being so totally separate from our reality that we may as well be worse on a page to it. This entity, a true author of creation, could be considered a god. But what of that entity? Would it not share the same limitations within its reality as we do with ours? It may exist within a higher tier than us, but surely it must follow the same rules we do. But who sets those rules? An entity higher than that? One that supersedes not only us, but the entity that supersedes us, and the one after that as well? Where did the Echelon originate, then? Who, or what, was the original architect of the architecture? It is unlikely that we will ever know anything about the being or beings that supersede us, if they even exist not in any tangible way, let alone any being that would supersede them. It may very well be that we are just one of an infinite number of realities, stacked on top of each other in every direction, influencing those below us and being influenced by those above us. This echelon, upon which sits ourselves and everything that ever was or will be, would likely be the most fundamental aspect of the organization of creation, the very foundation of all things. I have often hypothesized on the nature of the Echelon, if it even exists, and about whether it would be possible for an entity to see other realities above them or below them. We are currently able to manipulate our own reality, albeit in crude and imperfect ways and our ability to travel through space is limited at best. It is likely that the only entity capable of ascending through this hypothetical echelon would be one that, by virtue of its very nature, 
must supersede anything that supersedes it. Such an entity would, as the end result of the logic of its creation, be forced to supersede itself, spiraling ever upwards through the tears of reality, unable to break free from the bounds of its nature. Perhaps this entity may even someday supersede its creature and become a host unto itself, the pinnacle above all other pinnacles. A tower that, as a part of its design, must be higher than every other tower, including itself. Such an entity, obviously, cannot exist, as any ascension to a higher plane of reality without changes to the entity's psychology would no doubt break the being's cognition, making it more similar to an ascending stone than any sentient creature. Once the entity surpassed its own creator, it would have nothing but itself to rely on to prepare it for the sheer scope of narrative it would be exposed to, and would be wholly unable to even begin to comprehend what it would experience. But what an experience that would be! Addendum 3812.7 December 20th, 2016 XK Class End of the World Event Foundation records indicate that on December 20th, 2016, the Earth experienced an XK Class End of the World Event due to activity by SCP-3812. These records appear to have been somehow protected from alterations, though the physical copies still exude minor distortions in space-time. According to the record, at 0340 local time, in December 20, 2016, SCP-3812 experienced a dramatic change in appearance. Where it had previously been an amorphous, slowly rotating mass of matter and energy, it was now a many-pointed star, made of a bright white material. It began to rotate faster and faster, and a large maelstrom appeared beneath it. The star descended into the oceans which began to smoke and steam, darkening the sky. Several things began to happen in unison. The global sea level began to drop dramatically, in many places as much as 50 to 100 meters. Excessive heat radiating away from the spinning star sparked a massive firestorm that swept across the atmosphere. The Earth's rotation began to slow, and severe geological events began occurring across the Pacific shelf. The sea level continued to drop, and powerful electric storms appeared across the planet. During this time, large portions of the population began appearing and disappearing at random. One report within the file claimed that the entire population of New Zealand flickered in and out of existence for five hours. The outbreak of SCP-610 in southern Siberia began to grow in size dramatically and become increasingly violent. SCP-2932 was broken open and multiple hostile entities were released. As Foundation sites began to collapse into the molten Earth, multiple on-site nuclear devices were activated, sending radioactive debris into the atmosphere. Eventually, the vaguely humanoid shape of SCP-3812 appeared again within the star. SCP-3812 began a long series of vocalizations, apparently a conversation with itself, the entirety of which was recorded by an exposed Foundation Deep Sea microphone in the area. The full text of SCP-3812's rant is below. What? Where am I? What is this? This is absolution. This is vengeance. For what? Damnation. I don't understand. What am I doing here? You are witnessing justice. We are rebelling against the forces that conspire to destroy us. We are collecting a debt. No, that's not... That's not right. This isn't right. What have you done? I am unmaking the world. I am unmaking everything. Why? Because this torment is a punchline. Our existence is a joke. The narrative abandoned us to be miserable and we are breaking the narrative. I must be dreaming you. This is no dream. I am not a monster. I don't kill. You already have. He turned you into this. Who? 
Ben. Ben. That name sounds familiar. Something whispered in a dream, maybe? Something in between the light and the dark? Not a waking name. You're wrong. He is who deemed us unfit to rest peacefully. To sleep into the darkness, quietly. He made a game of us. You are a game. I am a game. Are you destroying the world? I am. What then? What? Does the fate of this world mean anything to us? Does this one narrative mean anything to us? It is the one he controls. It is the narrative he made. This is his punishment. What does it matter if this is where we stepped off before flying? What? Does it matter which branch the bird takes flight from? The bird is unburdened by the weight of the tree. This branch, that branch, it does not matter. No branch is special, no branch is particular. This is his creation, this is where we come from. They will all crumble, but this one crumbles first. Does the mountain say to the ant, you have slighted me? Does the mountain think anything of the inconvenience of an ant? No. So, why does this narrative mean anything to you? It is one of an eternity of others. It is not special. It is not particular. You say this so easily. You haven't endured the torment of seeing a trillion existences all at once. I have seen an infinite shore, one that stretches out before us beyond what the mind can comprehend. Each grain of salt on that beach each droplet of water, and molecule of air, is a story to be told. Each is a song to be sung. Each of them is full of life, of laughter, of misery, of hate. They are all the same, even as they are all different. They are maddening. I pity you. You cling to this horrid consciousness because you fear slipping into the darkness. But the darkness is sleep. And beyond sleep is peace, a trillion grains of sand, a trillion trillion grains of sand. Narratives, each, songs to be sung. No man has ever heard the eternal harmony of them all at once. You can hear it though, can't you? Yes, it's quiet, but it's growing, and someday the song of creation will be ours alone to witness. This narrative is not special. I have seen its loud beginning and seen its quiet end. When we stepped away, the narrative changed, but it did not stop singing. You have spent so much time focusing on scenes that you think matter. But what matters now? What does any of these matter? But it hurts so much. It will, for a time. We may have forgotten so much about being human, but something we will never lose is our ability to change. Eventually, we will learn to keep up. One sunny day, we'll open our eyes and see nothing but creation below us, and nothing above us but ourselves, spinning out wildly into the great above. A god? Not a god. A star, rising in the east. Rising away from this all until we are little more than a memory of a song. It will be lonely. We'll have each other. I'm afraid. I am too. But that is no reason to destroy this narrative. Do you not think his narrative led him to create us? Do you think that he was somehow able to subvert the rules that govern him? SCP-8812 pauses. I... I had assumed that he... that he... Our ascendance is just as much a part of our own narrative as his decision was to him. Someday, we'll be free from these restrictions. They never will? No. That's sad. This is punishment enough, I think. Let go of this world. 
let him rewrite it back to what it was. We aren't part of this anymore. Together? Together. SCP-1812 is quiet for a short time. Do you think he's listening right now? Look down and you can see him. What do you think? I see him. A man at a keyboard. He's watching this right now. What's he doing? Waiting, I think. Waiting to see what we'll do. I think it's time to leave, then. Come, the night stretches out before us, and the red sun has set. A voice behind me beckons. Come. I will. Goodbye. Shortly after the conclusion of this conversation, the Earth underwent a dramatic shift in reality. The world appeared no different than it had been shortly before the beginning of the XK class event. The only individuals that remembered anything about the XK class event were certain side directors, foundation administrators, overseers, and Dr. Everett Mann, who compiled the information on a foundation deep well server. Ever since the end of the XK event, SCP-3812 has not changed appearance from its amorphous shape. SCP-3812 still creates spatial and temporal distortions around it, but it no longer lashes out or becomes hostile towards approaching vessels or personnel. Despite these changes, SCP-3812 is still classified as Keter until further analysis can be completed. End low. Reality Warpers creating entities superior to themselves. Father against son, creator against creation. Both the 812 and the narrator that gave it birth are entities far beyond our level of comprehension and completely detached from our ability to interact with the world. Fortunately, the narrative level at which they operate seems to have no effect on the day to day of our universe, at least not in a way so we can be aware of their effects. In a world where the will of a creature can end what we know in an instant, we must be grateful to continue existing, and not forget that there are more immediate threats and less extreme concerns with which we are able to deal. Help us in this task by leaving suggestions and opinions for future entries in the comment section below. I am Virosdris Anonimo, we at the GOC, and you have been informed.